Hello everyone, and welcome to Learnable Computer Science. Today, we'll be doing part two out of two of the object-oriented programming topic. And today, we'll be starting actually coding, so let's get into it, super excited. So, this is basically how it all works. Let me just explain what, um, what this is. So we have discussed classes and objects, right? So first we define a class as book. There's no object and then book, book um, colon. So uh, we will, um, so that's how it is. So it's class, book, and then a colon. And then that's basically telling Python that you are defining that object or that class. And in here, you're doing define, init, then all of this. You're like, what the, I never saw this before. So the init is something called a constructor. So the constructor is a function that makes the object. So it initializes all of the attributes and is always required, even has nothing in it. For example, in this, a book has a title, author, and price, and it's initializing those attributes. So this init function, even though the syntax seems weird, this is a constructor, right? And uh, the self part, you see the self, you're like, what, what is this? Just kind of put that for every single function inside of the class. Just trust me on that and just put it. You won't necessarily, uh, so use title, author, price, but you don't use self, but uh, just use self for each one because self basically tells Python that this function belongs to the class and it belongs to the object. So each individual object has its own, uh, has, has its own function which is super important. So always put self in the beginning and then for all the functions, which we're about to go through, which we will, uh, just put self and then put the parameters that you want to use. So let me explain all this again. So we have a class book with the colon. This is basically telling Python that there's going to be a new class. This entire thing is a constructor where we basically... Um, basically initialize the attributes. So the attributes are of a book are title, author, and price. Okay, so now you're doing self dot. You put the two underlines title. Just trust me on that. Just, just put the, just put that and is equal to title and self dot dash dash author is equal to author. Basically what you're doing now is you're initializing its own, its own title and its own author and its own price into like from the information given. For example, if you do book is equal to book, Python, comma, side, comma, $10. This is basically, so this book is an object. And it's initializing the book class. So a book is a very general thing, right? Book is very general. Book has a title, author, price. But the thing is an object. Object is very, very specific. For example, the calculus AB textbook. So here, the title is Python, the author is Sai, and the price is $10. So this book object, its name is Python and it costs $10 and it's written by Sai. So self.title is equal to Python, self.author is equal to Sai, and self.price is equal to $10. Hopefully that made sense. If you're not, please, please, please email me or you can... um join like the weekly tutoring sessions that we have, and then we can totally answer your question. So now, getters and setters, okay. Okay, so here, getters, right? See, you see how before I said self, the self occurs everywhere. So you already written functions, right? So this entire thing should seem, should not seem that unorthodox, right? So this is the constructor, which you went into. This defines the object. Very, very important. This is always required. Getters are, it gets the information from the object. So it, so it allows others to look at the information from your own. For example, if you do define get title, you return self dot dash dash title. The reason why you do getters is because like, for example, if you have a house, right? You don't want people to just come in, take your stuff, right? They don't want, like, you don't want them to just look around everywhere and take your stuff. That's not what you want. 
You want them to ask permission. They ask you permission. Can I see this? Then you approve it and then they come, which is very, very important. So this get title, this is basically like the house. You are approving them to come. Instead of just allowing them to come and just look out whatever they want, take whatever they want, right? So you can do that for all the attributes. So define get title and you return the title. Define get author uh, and, and return the author and, and return self to author. And then you get price and then you return self to price. Pretty self, self explanatory. And for each of the functions, you should always put self. Always. That's always a big rule of thumb. Always put self as one of the parameters. Yeah, and you just return the return the thing. So you do self dot dash dash title, and that's how you get the information of each individual object. You may be tempted to put return title, right? That's that's so much more common sense, right? You just want get title, return title, get author, return author. But the thing is, each of them are defined at inside of the book, so that's why you need the self dot dash dash author, which is super important. Hopefully that analogy of the house makes a little bit of sense. And then setters, you set its attributes on a given information, basically changing its attributes. For example, if a person comes to your house, takes your TV and puts a bad TV there, right? Without your permission, how would you feel, right? Like that doesn't, that, that, that is not how it works. You need to get the permission from the other person to see if they can replace the TV. And then if you approve it, then they replace it. So that's exactly what the set methods do. So set title. So you get the title, right? So this is a new title that you want to include. So you do self dot exactly like this. So you know how this is initializing it. You're just changing it here. So self dot dash dash title is equal to title. You replace the title. And then you replace the author and you replace the price. Same syntax. And then if you add the book is equal to book Python side $10, that works the exact same as before, except now we're building up the class. And you can morph these fun uh, and you can morph the objects using these functions. And then we have these because of the house analogy. So we have additional functions. So you can add additional functions. For example, you can add the read function for a book. Like, like we just we're doing a book class here, right? You can add another function called read where it just prints reading. Again, self very important in each step of the self. And then we have the reaper or reproduce, basically prints out the object that way that you'd like to be printed. And not always include self as parameters. Always and another time, very important. So define, re reproduce, and then you title. And then you include the title plus author is equal to author plus price is equal to price. And then you just do print book and it returns exactly the way that you would think it will. Title and it'll do title, title colon Python, comma, author colon psi, comma, price colon $10. That's how it works. Which is really cool because if you just do print book without having this function, right? It would just print out like a certain like random, random like letters and numbers. But if you have this reproduce function, it prints out exactly the way that you'd like it, which is super, super useful. Highly recommend you to do it. But again, this is an optional method. Okay. So now this is the entire thing. So I'll just go through this again to make sure that you all understand. So here's the attributes. The attributes are the things that an object has. These are the behaviors. So it's what the object does, right? And these are the getters and these are the setters and these are the optional functions. And then this is the constructor. Constructor initializes the, initializes the, uh, initializes the object from the class. And then here when you're doing book is equal to book, Python comma psi comma $10, you're initializing the, uh, the book object to, and, and you're putting it in a, container called book. And if you do print book here, it would do title colon, uh, um, sorry, title colon Python, comma author colon psi, comma price colon $10. That's what we'll print out. And if you do book dot get author, 
get author self dot dash dash. Really important that you do that. It will return sci. Uh, and if you do book dot read, it will print reading. And we have the self dot self dot dash dash to indicate that this is belongs to the object. This entire thing belongs to the object. And you don't need to include the dash dash. I just want to say that. But I would highly, highly recommend including the dash dash. I don't know why other tutorials don't do that. But I would highly recommend it. The reason is because you're making those attributes private. Or like, um, so there's like another acronym acronyms in, in computer science called public, private, and protected. We, you, you don't exactly need to know those. But this dash dash indicates Python that no matter what, outside outside functions or outside like code cannot access this. So it's really important. I would highly recommend it, but you don't need to include the dash dash thing. But I would highly, but in all my examples, I will always include a dash dash because that is the way it's supposed to be written. So it's self dot dash dash title, self dot dash dash author, self dot dash dash price. Okay, that's enough me rambling on. So let's start coding. So let's build a phone object. Oh, starting from scratch. Let's get into it. Okay, let's not do the entire thing because hopefully you got the idea on how it kind of works. But uh, let's let's just try to do it. So class, phone. And you put the colon at the end. This basically indicates to Python that you're making a new class called phone. First thing that you always need to do, do the constructor. So you do define, the, you just make a function. You do, you do underscore underscore in it, underscore underscore. You put the parentheses, put self, and then you can put whatever parameters you want to. So now it's time to think object oriented thinking. Exactly what happened in the first class. So what all stuff does a phone have? A phone has a model. A phone has a name, and a phone has a has a brand. Right? Model name brand. Let's do that. Model, name, and brand. Okay. Now we initialized the function. And by the way, if you're wondering what init means, it means initialize. Initialize is a constructor because you're initializing the attributes or the things that the object has, right? So let's do self dot dash dash model is equal to model. Self dot dash dash name is equal to name and uh, self dot dash dash brand is equal to brand. Okay. Basically, what we have done is we have initialized what exactly a phone object does. So let's run it to see if there's any errors. Okay, there's no errors. That's good. Okay. Let me just quickly plug in my laptop to battery. Okay. So this is the constructor. Hopefully, this makes sense now. You're getting uh you're getting what exactly you want to be initialized, and you're just initializing it to the object's own uh object's own attributes or what the object has. This is the attributes. These, this, this, and this are the attributes. Okay, now we should make getters and setters. So to define, get model, we always need to include self. And then to do return self dot dash dash model. And just kind of copy it for all of them. Now you do get name, and then you do dash dash name. I do get brand, you do dash dash brand. Okay, I kind of lightning speed through that, but hopefully it makes sense. Um, Basically what you're doing here is you're doing the getters. So the getters, uh, you just return the self dot, the attribute. So if you do get model, self dot dash dash model. If you do get name, it's self dot dash dash name. And if it's get brand, it's self dot dash dash brand. Exactly how we defined it here. Very important. We get the model brand name and we define it. 
And then here we're just returning it outside. We're, we're giving permission to outsiders to view our house. Okay, now let's do setters. So to define set model, self model, and then you do self dot dash dash model equal to model. I just copy that for all of these. I do set name. I want the name. I want the name. Dash dash name. Okay. I do set brand. Ask you for brand. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense as well. We basically did uh, three set methods where basically we're getting the model parameter as a parameter and we're setting the model parameter to our own attribute. So we're replacing the original attribute with a new attribute. And that's what we're doing for name and that's what we're doing for brand as well for each brand name and model. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Then we can do another additional function called def call. We always need to include self. And then do print calling learnable. Simple function. Okay, now let's make the object. So if you do my phone, or actually, no, let's just do phone is equal to phone. This is very important notation. So basically like the reason why you're doing phone and then the parentheses is you want to define the uh, object, right? So it's kind of like a function where we define it by uh, passing the um, passing the name and then you put the parentheses and then inside the parentheses, you put the parameters exactly like a function. So hopefully that makes it a little bit easier how we're kind of connecting all these kind of topics into this one centralized topic. So now it, it, it asks for a model name and brand. So model, we can say iPhone, iPhone name is, let's just say iPhone 14, Pro Max, the elite iPhone, let's do that. And then the brand is Apple. Oops, not in that, Apple. Okay, so basically what we did here is we have defined a new object by instantiating the phone class by giving it the specific model of iPhone because we did, we asked for model, name, and brand. We asked it for a specific model as iPhone, specific name as iPhone 14 Pro, and the brand as Apple. That's basically what we did. And we can use the we can use the um reproduce function. But for this example, I'm not going to. Um, but you can do that on your own based on how I included it for the book class. So now we can just do phone dot get model. This should return the model. So let me delete this and start it again. See, another, that's a big mistake. Phone dot get model. You're not printing anything out here. So again, super important. So let's do print. And now let's run it. And our iPhone. We can also do, uh, let's just do call or let's, or we can do set method. So phone dot set, set grand, Samsung. <laughs> Samsung, let's do that. That's gonna be fun. And now if we do get, get brand, let's see how that will work. Okay, so iPhone run, it changes the brand to Samsung and then it prints out the brand. So it's Samsung now. That's kind of funny. <laughs> so this is how it was before. We just did get model. So we printed an iPhone 
we set the brand as Samsung. So this will be replaced with Samsung. And then we do phone.get brand, so it'll be Samsung. Okay, and then we can just do print. Or we can just call call phone.call. Because this prints it here, we don't necessarily need to print it again. So if you do print, print call, and just do calling learnable. We're done. This is the phone class. And you also may be wondering like, if we have a parameter here self, right? We have to kind of pass in the parameter self here like this because it doesn't make sense, right? But just ignore the self. Just put it as if it's there. Just put it as if it's there and just leave it out. That's, I, I don't really know why Python decided to do that. In this case, I feel like Java syntax makes a little bit more sense, but that's just how the Python engineers have done it. So um, just kind of roll with it. So because self is not, um, self is not here, so um, self is here, so just don't put it here. Okay, we're done. So let's go back to the slides. We're almost done, everyone. So now let's go into the homework. So basically explain OOP and why we use it. And then the second homework, create a class called car, which has attributes name, brand, year, has a constructor to define these, and has methods get name, get brand, get year, and set functions for all of the above. And a drive function that prints I am driving with a reproduce function with any way how you like it, your creativity. So that's basically the homework. Hopefully you understood. If you need any help, please be please feel free to email me at silalithkanamuri at gmail.com or you can join the weekly tutoring sessions which we have going on at the Learnable Organization. But other than that, this is Sai. One of the most important topics just finished. You're almost done now. Just wait for a few more classes and we are done with the basics of Python. So I'll see you in the next class. Bye-bye.